Good morning, my friends. This is Enlightened Fitness. I am Lama Jigme Gyatso. Welcome to my office in the Buddha Joy Meditation School. Today we're going to start with a quick excerpt from Dr. John McDougall's Start Solution. Then we're going to do a brief warm up, a five minute workout, and then a five minute guided meditation. I'm a big, I guess, I'm a huge fan of Dr. Michael Greger, MD, who publishes at least three times a week on YouTube, as well as Dr. Anil Barnard, MD, and Dr. John McDougall. These are very prolific physicians who practice nutritional medicine, the latter of which has written the book, The Start Solution. Come on, you silly bastard. There we go. The U.S. Department of Agriculture, the World Health Organization, and all other international health organizations recommend protein levels ranging from 33 to 71 grams a day for adult men and women. Very close to Dr. Chittenden's numbers. Yet even these policymakers who are fully informed about our small protein need remain confused about the issue of animal versus plant proteins. Proteins are built from 20 amino acids that are connected into chains in varying sequences. It's a bit like the way all of our words in a dictionary are made up from combinations formed from the 26 letters in our alphabet. Plants and microorganisms are able to synthesize all 20 of these amino acids. Humans can synthesize only 12 of them, which we call non-essential because we needn't rely on food to get them already formed. The remaining amino acids are called essential because we get them from the foods we eat. When we eat, our stomach acids and intestinal enzymes break the protein molecules back down into individual amino acids. The body absorbs these amino acids into the bloodstream and then reassembles them to form new proteins. These newly formed proteins help us to maintain the shape of our cells, to create enzymes for biological biochemical reactions, to produce the hormones that signal messages between our cells, and to perform other life-sustaining activities. Because they are a soup such a rich source of complete proteins, plants alone meet the entire protein and amino acid needs of the Earth's largest animals, including elephants, hippopotamuses, giraffes, and cows, all of which are vegan. If plants can satisfy the demands of these enormous mammals, wouldn't you think they could easily meet our own protein needs. Indeed, they can and they do. Thank you, Dr. McDougall. Folks, Dr. McDougall, Neil Barnard, Dr. Neil Barnard, Dr. Michael Greger have had a fantastic truck record of helping reverse heart disease, cancer, hypertension, autoimmune disorders by relying upon um, a whole food vegan diet, which means it is safe to rely upon such a diet. Therefore, it's safe to practice compassion for cows and pigs and chickens and fish. It's safe to practice compassion for the planet that is harmed by the CO2 emissions and uh, the pollution of the groundwater caused by factory farming, which means it's safe to have compassion on the rest of humanity 
that can only be rescued from starvation and malnutrition through a whole food vegan diet, which means it's safe to have compassion on ourselves so we can eat the, the, the food that will give us the greatest health and leanness and beauty and longevity and lucidity, which means it's safe to have compassion on our friends and loved ones and not become a burden to them by needlessly having horrible diseases or dying far too quickly. It's safe to be compassionate. It's safe to go vegan. Well, now it's time to work out. But before we do, let's warm up. There's a huge difference between warming up and stretching out. Stretching out is great after your workout, but when your muscles are cold, the best thing you can do in this case is to perform the five exercises that we're going to do, but in a slow way with the intention that we're doing it just to warm up the body. Please warm up with me right now. Oh. Come, let us start with judo squats. Remember, we're just warming up. Breathe deeply. Do tabletops, also known as flying bridges. Now let's perform some presses. Now let's perform some twisted lifts or raises. Now let's do some Chin pulls with the elbows out. If these exercises are unfamiliar with you or to you, use the links below in the doodly do to find the explanation video. Elbows down. And now we are much warmer than we were a few minutes ago. Now let's work to the proper workout for just five minutes. And since it's five minutes only, let's work out as vigorously as it is safe for us to do. I'd love to put music on for you right now, but when I do, YouTube doesn't like it. <laughs> Here's the timer. Okay, judo squats. <laughs> 
table pulls. Twisted push ups. Twisted rays. Shin pulls, elbows out. Judo squat. Tabletops. Presses. Twisted rays. Shin pulls elbows down. Judo squats. Come on through circuit. Circuit. Here we go. Flying bridges, here we go. Straight or centered presses. Water. Water is our friend.
I'm recording the water I consume, my chart, my app, because I'm a geek. Okay. Before we start our five minutes of guided meditation, let's find a comfortable way to sit. The fundamentalists will say you have to sit in a full lotus posture, and if you change your posture, you can't become a Buddha. Well, that's cool, but it just ain't right. That is not what Buddha taught at all. We sit, I recommend learning several sitting postures, and as your body exhibit, exhibits fatigue or pain, we rotate from one posture to the next. So what I'm doing right now, sitting like a samurai, also known as lower lion pose, is perfectly useful. There's another version called the Tara posture. One leg, oh, actually, we'll start with the diamond posture, feet together, knees to the side. Many people like this. Some people prefer the Tara pose or the rescuer pose. One leg in, other out, knees relaxed to the ground. Now, we don't force our knees to the ground. We let gravity pull them. We don't want to loosen up our knee joints. They're hinge joints. If they get loose, we can't walk. What we're trying to loosen up is our hip joints, the ball sockets right here. And of course, we can also reverse this. Works just fine. Then there is the quarter lotus pose, where one leg is on the bottom, comfortably relaxed, and the other leg's atop that. That's the quarter lotus pose that can be done with either leg on the bottom. This is my go-to posture of choice. When you examine the most ancient of Buddhist statues, the, the Buddha is depicted as sitting this way. It wasn't until much later that after the Hindu influence upon Buddhism, they began, began seeing Buddha statues you sitting in the full lotus. If you desire and if your, your hips are ready for it, you can try the, the half lotus which simply means the leg on top is resting upon the opposite femur. And in time it relaxes. And then after it's relaxed, after weeks or months, you can pull into the full lotus on the other side. Having said all that, water, Let us meditate. Now, it is a mistake to confuse Neo-Taoist or Hindu meditation with Buddhist meditation, but that is what has happened over more than 26 centuries. Entering the ping of no thought is not what Buddha taught, it's what the Neo-Taoists practice. Perfect laser-like concentration or escaping your, your sorrows by e losing yourself in bliss is not what Buddha taught. It's what some of the Hindus taught. I only teach what Buddha taught in the Maha Satipatthana Sutta or the Greater Discourse upon the four, oopsie, four Bases of Mindfulness. Arguably, it can directly and indirectly contains the essence of all of Buddha's meditation instructions and contains the promise that if its instructions are followed, the practitioner can accomplish full enlightenment in seven years or seven months or seven weeks or even seven days. This is radical. Do I believe it? I don't believe in belief, but I think that's a really cool idea that captures my imagination. So you can download a free copy of the Maha Satipatthana Sutta and the Tao Te Ching and all the guided meditations that I teach 
by using one of the links in the doodly do. Everything I do is free. If you really enjoy my work, you can support it either by making a big donation or, or no donation or simply by sharing it on social media. But everything I do is for free. So let's move forward. I'm not going to, be going to be giving instructions on how to meditate. This is primarily just a guided meditation. If you require instructions, that's fine. In the PDF you can download for free, there are links. And every time you come upon a link, click it, it'll take you to a YouTube video where yours truly explains stuff to you. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Well, folks, we saturated our brain in the words of John McDougall. We've stimulated our muscular systems, our cardiovascular systems, our lymphatic systems. We've even stimulated bone density and our hormonal systems. Now let's train our heart and mind in greater bliss and joy. Bliss and joy are not the goals of the path, but they are useful tools for centering. There are, you, if you did every meditation in one sitting, it would take you two to three hours. That's a long time. But I always recommend people begin with centering meditations that can be done in five to ten minutes. Super simple. That is what we are going to play with today. There are four bases of mindfulness. These centering exercises are brought to us by the first base of mindfulness, the body. Hands in your lap, just stack them. Don't bother touching the thumbs. Hands close to the tummy, elbows back, everything relaxed. On the in-breath, I invite you to silently and mentally recite the rhetorical question, how deep breath. And on the out breath, I invite you to silently, mentally recite the intention, relaxing. Oops, I forgot to set the timer. Got to do that. Make sure you're only meditating for five minutes. So you got a schedule to keep. How deep breath, relaxing. Second exercise of the first set of three exercises. Where feel bliss? Relaxing. Now, notice, this is not an affirmation. We're not telling ourselves that we feel bliss, because affirmations are lies that we tell ourselves about things that have not yet happened. Rather, this is a mindfulness training exercise. For just as a piano can have 88 keys, we can ex our body can be experiencing a whole myriad of physical and emotional and mental experiences. The only question is, are we aware of what is going on? So let's just guide our awareness with the question, where feel bliss and on the out breath, relaxing. Let's repeat the first exercise. How deep breath, relaxing. Sure do you like my space heater. 
Let's start the second set of three exercises. We we'll begin by playing with our face. Grin with lips to breath, relaxing. Grin with cheeks to breath, relaxing. And lastly, grin with eyes to breath, relaxing. Second exercise of the third set. Where feel joy, Relaxing. Remember, that's a rhetorical question. We don't answer a rhetorical question. We just ask it and then relax. Where feel joy? Relaxing. Third exercise of the second set is a simplification of the grinning exercise. Grin to breath, relaxing. Which brings us to the third set of exercises. The first set, I'm sorry, the first exercise of the third set is also a grinning exercise. But this time we're grinning to the body. Grin with lips to body, relaxing. Grin with cheeks to body, Relaxing. Grin with eyes to body. Relaxing. And that is the timer. Congratulations, my friends. You survived your first five-minute guided meditation. You probably are not completely in line just yet. You may have experienced greater centeredness, greater bliss, greater joy. Play with this exercise if you can twice daily. Not the whole exercise video, just the five-minute guided meditation. Practice five minutes daily and within a week you should see some substantial changes and that's all you get today if you like this video find the thumbs up icon and click it or the like button and click it if you also like this i invite you to share it on social media if you like this so much you don't want to miss the next video then find the red button that reads subscribe give that a click after you do, just to the right, a little circular icon will appear in the shape of a donut or a gear. When you click down, a drop-down menu will descend, and if you check the first box, you'll be authorizing YouTube to send you an email notification the next time I upload a video. All the questions you have about how to exercise or how to eat right or how to meditate are found in the links in the doodly do. If you decide that you'd like to participate in a live in live meditation instruction, either in person in Southern California or during a live internet webinar, use the appropriate links in the doodly do. 
None of my classes have fees. Everything is by donation. Some give big amounts, some give small amounts, some give nothing. What is mandatory is that you show up five minutes early and that you do your homework twice daily, every morning and every evening. That's it. Now I'm going to try to crawl over to the computer in as dignified a manner as I can. May you and yours be healthy and happy. Bye-bye now.